All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, referencing a news source, um, the World Bank has said that development uh, progress in the country has slowed down since 2015. When Major General Muhammad Buhari retired, was first elected as president. Now, according to World Bank's Nigeria, um, World Bank's Nigeria Public Finance Report, titled "A Better Future for All Nigerians," um, 2022 Nigeria Poverty Asset Management, no Poverty Assessment, Nigeria performed well between 2001 and 2014, with an average growth of seven percent and was among the top 15 fastest growing economies globally. Now, the report released on November 21st, 2022, read in part, Nigeria's development progress um, has stagnated. Between 2001 and 2024, Nigeria was a rising star in West Africa with an average growth rate of about 7% per year, and it ranked among the top 15 fastest growing economies in the world. However, this trend ended abruptly in 2015 as oil prices fell, the security situation deteriorated, macroeconomic reforms were reversed, and economic policies became increasingly unpredictable. While it may seem like Nigeria, look, or Nigeria took a downward um, turn during President Mohamed Buhari's regime, he did make some progress in other aspects. So tonight we're asking, right, in your own assessment. Has Nigeria prospered under Buhari? Um, and please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-4663. Or you can also tweet at us at <coughs> Ratio Africa 1 with the hashtag Ratio. So if you call an economist, if you call a security agency, um, sorry, a security expert, if you call um, a business person, if you call a CEO or an entrepreneur, I think everybody would have different things to say to you. Absolutely. If you call Dangote, Dangote yeah. would tell you this is the best government that happens in sliced bread again because, you know, under this leadership, he's been able to start and finish, you know, a whole refinery, right, that is the biggest in the world. So everybody would have their scorecard. Mm -hmm. So I'd like us to approach this not from the expertise point yeah. of view, from what you have, what you have felt personally you know, between um, 2015 till date, you know, has personal, I'm talking about your life now, has your life progressed, you know, on a personal level? Have you seen growth? You know, um, if situations were turned, like, or maybe different, would your outcome or your current status be a lot different or a lot further, whether for good or for bad, than what it is today? Do you understand? Are you feeling a lot more secured? Are you feeling a lot more happy to be associated with the brand Nigeria? What exactly is running through your mind? Mm. You are smiling. <laughs> Let me start with mm. you. Yes, so. <laughs> this, this, this topic, when, when I saw it, I was just laughing because the answer for me is very direct. But I'm going to start by, there was a survey. I, I was going through a um, series of write-up and I um, saw a survey <clears throat> by the African pooling unit. So this survey was conducted by from ordinary people on the streets. So it states that just about 8% of Nigerians are happy with the current state of affairs under President Madhu Buhari. That's people on the street, OK? Not I have even to take up to that. 10%. Not even up to 10%. Wow. So I think that, in a nutshell, says a lot of things. So let me come personally to me. I don't think there's, there's any Nigerian that has not felt the impact of this government. Me, cost of living. <laughs> It's very, very evident, rose by almost 150%. So the normal things you buy in the market, you know, skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. And every day, every time you're going to the market, things are changing. Let me come to, um, I, I have a business. I'm running a business as well as I work with the company. And I can tell you it's been a struggle from FX to so many other things. Operating costs rose. Um, even assessing funds from the bank, it was a, it's not easy running a business during this period. It's not been easy. It's not still easy. So I'm not, um, this is not, this is a very honest approach. It's been difficult under um, the current administration. And definitely from my own side, I would say we've been striving. I've been striving to stay on my feet and be prosperous, but definitely um, I would not say Nigerians who have been prosperous under this 
regime. Health-wise, um, you're not confident in the health system. There is no proper legislation, or maybe there was, but it wasn't properly put in place. A lot of young people have even gone more into drugs. Gone more into drugs. Not about to security. Find dependence on I remember there was a time which I had to, I missed my flight, so I had to like go by road to the east. There was ah. a time, yes, yes, <laughs> I stepped down and we had to walk through. Him. So the fear of even traveling by road, that was a huge risk. And so many people said, do not do it. So if you're in a situation where people are actually advising you do not travel by road. These are common people on the street. Also, I want to travel. Someone said, I've not been to the East for almost three years because of insecurity and traveling by road. So that tells you how the state of mind of ordinary Nigerians. So it's not been, it's not been easy. I don't think Nigeria has really been prosperous. But since you're trying, I don't want to go away from what you ask, which is our personal experience. No, we'll come back yes. to Nigeria. I just want so to get your personal... It's not... It's not, been, it's not been easy. It's been tough business-wise. It's been tough. The cost of living, the standard of living, everything, mm. it's been so tough. Mm. Yeah. I can see you're nodding. <laughs> <laughs> because, I mean, I'm nodding because I agree with everything that you said, mm. totally. I'll just buttress her point because cost of living especially, my goodness, like the inflation rate is terrible. The things that you could buy for 500 naira before, you're probably buying them for 1,000 or even 1,500. And it just leaves me wondering how is, um, because at this point, I don't want to say an average Nigerian because I feel like there's no average in Nigeria again. Mm. So you're either poor or you're rich because everyone is just on survival mode. We're trying to survive. It has really not been easy, like you said rightly. It has not been easy business-wise because if you're even trying to sell something, the people you are trying to sell to, they probably don't even have money to buy what you want to buy. So how then are you supposed to sell? How are you supposed to make profits? It's, it has been really, really tough. But I would, my, my standpoint is inflation because it is crazy. Mm. It is really, really terrible. I mean insecurity on one side but inflation i, I wonder how how do people eat mm. how do people really afford well three square mil um, has never really been a thing in nigeria let's not lie it has been one zero one because mm. i mean for various reasons not even because of money but really how many people now can afford that one zero one some people are affording just zero zero one or one zero zero it is terrible it is really crazy so to say that um Buhari's administration has been favorable is saying telling a lie to be honest, I don't think that it has entirely been favorable because it has been from one chaos to the other, devaluing Naira. And now, if you are transacting foreign exchange, it is terrible. The hike in price, why am I buying Naira at that very expensive price? So how much am I supposed to put on the goods that I am selling? Mm -hmm. how, how, am I supposed to, how am I supposed to meet a customer's needs? When even the customers that I want to meet, they cannot even afford to for their own needs to be met. So it is... Hmm. It's the circle of Wahala. <laughs> Let me come to you, Diola. Mm. <laughs> okay, so for me, I mean, it's um, very evident disposable income, of course, has dropped. Mm -hmm. um, there is no increase of um, funds anywhere. I mean, you know, I remember that um, when he became president, there was this expectation oh the president Buhari I mean under General Buhari was um, he brought about war against indiscipline you know everything you know everybody had such high expectations that finally Talk about my parents <laughs> you know they've, they've, so, not, they've so not stopped they've not stopped hounding me mm. did we not tell you before? not to mm. vote Buhari you seen change mm. embrace it mm. You know, so for me then, okay, so I, I, I will start from there. I felt that Nigeria was a country that thrived on corruption. Mm. You know, corruption was what made it feel... It's not it was. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it is. It is, country, okay. Current reality. Exactly. So, again, now this is someone who came, you know, with the promise of, you know, a man fighting corruption and all that. And I can say that one of my grievances with this administration has been that is it's either someone somewhere is lying or it is either you sit at the elm of affairs and completely oblivious exactly completely oblivious because it would be actually impractical it would be totally senseless to think that Nigerians are having it rosy. Personally, I'm not having it rosy. Number two, in the last eight years, Nigerians have become more depressed. Mm -hmm. 
That's, that's a fact. Mm. And it is evident in the number of young people doing Yahoo, the number of people mm. relocating, mm. the number of people going into drugs. Th these, are be these are all statistics. I mean, the facts are there, you know. And then, again, I mean, you, t you, t you talk about oh, policies or you talk about... And then you're just hearing these things. Mm. The average person on the streets, there's such a huge disconnect. You don't even feel like there's a government in place, mm. you know. So for me, I just feel, okay, what everybody is all man for himself. We're just waking up and then, and then the biggest one, of course, banditry is like, that's the new business. Anybody can wake up and decide, this is the business I want to do. Nobody will take, nobody will catch me. Mm. I can go scot-free. Because I, I think, again, under his leadership, mm. right, let's bring, start from insecurity. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was a certain tribe, they called them Fulani Headsmen and mm, all of mm. that. It seemed like because this is almost like a symbol of our tribe mm. being at the helms of affairs, I would have thought that you would have been a lot more tougher in dealing with that banditry and fighting all those Boko mm -hmm. Haram. Mm. And all of that. Not because of anything, because again, it almost seemed like our daddy is at the helms of affairs. So mm. now we have the free reign. And that's what played out in terms of all these banditry mm. and kidnapping, mm. ransom headsmen going to people's farms and destroying it and all of that. It just, it just felt like, you know what, my dad is in charge, so I can't do anything. Can do anything. That's what that looked like. You see, when the president is talking and saying that we did our best, you see, every time I hear the president speak, he's always speaking from a point of being defensive. First of all, I don't even know if the president is open to criticism, like mm. in terms of like constructive criticisms. This is not people telling you something. I was going to say on Monday that because the president was coming to commission Dangote Refinery, I was literally swearing for, God forgive me, but you know what, like literally I was like cursing out, saying mm. that what kind of wickedness is this? Mm. Mm. So you know you can actually get people in 10 minutes, they leave their houses and they will get to where they are going. Right? Why can't you deploy the amount of security personnel to ensure that this Lekki Expressway is free from traffic so that people can use their time productively mm -hmm. instead of spending long hours in, in traffic. traffic? Because the president was coming to to Lekki uh, to what's called to Ekpe for the commissioning of the refinery. I'm telling you, when Uti called me and said there's going to be traffic, there's an advisory that the president was coming all over. In my mind, I was already panicking. Which kind of wala is this mm. one? When I came out, it was like a joke. <laughs> I literally left my house at 8.30, normally. Normally, yes. before I would get to my office, like 10.30, mm. if I leave late. That's why most times I, like, I try to leave like 6, so that mm. I can get there for 9. Yeah. I left 8.30. Jola, I got to my office at 8.49, 8.50. I said, really? So we can actually do 30 minutes, we can do 20 minutes on this road. And we do two hours. Now, yesterday... Enough for that to emphasize why I needed to curse them out again. Because I left this <laughs> office. No, it's true. I left this office at 9.30. Mm -hmm. I didn't get to my house until like 12. Yeah. Who was that for? Because of bad roads, because of potholes, right? But you see, I'm tired of government doing dre window dressing. Mm -hmm. There are real issues. This road, they, they need real drainages, right? We need real solutions. Stop doing patchwork. So when you come in as a government and somebody is trying to tell you something, don't take it that people are trying to attack you. We are the ones feeling it. Because when you are coming, they would have done all the yes. panaculaia and make sure you course. do not hear yes. your yes. 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 Do you understand? Yes. So you do not, you, you are not feeling the reality of what we feel. Mm. Mm. So it makes no sense that somebody tells you that your scorecard is reading minus 100. It's not even zero. <laughs> right? And you are saying, no, 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 we've done our best, we've done this, we've done that. I mean, I was, I was some, I think I was, it was in passing, I saw a write-up on a commissioning that he did virtually from Abuja. They said that road is not even complete yet. Just because I want to commission something, mm. I commissioned it. Do you understand? So please, if we want to rate it, just like the way you will rate yourself, mm. you've been given a task, did I deliver? I am the biggest critic of myself. Mm. If, I di if I do a shabby job, I look at myself in the mirror and I tell myself the truth. Do you understand? So nobody can come and deceive me that, oh, why is it nice? No, it was a poor job. Mm. Own it. Do you understand? And look forward to doing better. And that's why I think, again, this is the vengeance that Nigerians used in the 2023 general elections. Yeah. So even if nobody tells you that you have scored badly, mm. 
right? The reactions mm -hmm. of yeah. the people you govern should tell you that you are scoring badly. That's why people are revolting against oh, you. They did not notice. Do you understand? They did not notice <laughs> that. No, look at the look at look at the They did not notice that they did not notice. Exactly. <laughs> or it's, he's just been, he's been um, protected from all this. Even if they, they protect you, you know, 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 you even in his own election in 2015, mm. the numbers were not this much. Yeah, yeah, the true. people that came out to vote, to vote actually, mm -hmm. the true. people that voted in were not as much as the, the, the voting that happened in 2023. True. It was anger. Mm. It was bitter. The people were, were taking tired. flights from outside the country so to come, come and vote. vote. Yeah. It had never been done in the history of Nigeria. So even if nobody tells you, they read the room. Mm. No, look at the Naira redesign. A complete failure. That's you put it. people through hardship. I mean, fact. I saw a baba at the bank. Mm. The day they finally decided that they were going to give us the old notes. When the man collected that money, he looked at the, the teller lady. Chai. He said, God will forgive you people. Mm. Now, you people, have not, you people don't understand what you people put Do you know how through. people... Do you know how many people do you know died? People, do you know how many people died? Let's open our <laughs> <business. Let's laughs> <open up. laughs> I can I, I'm ready for them, oh. Anything you want to do, I mean, you cannot. It's, mm. it's just ridiculous. In fact, I, I even if they don't tell you something, you say, "You go look and tell yourself now." I, I even feel that the Naira redesign was the focal. He, he, he truly defined his administration, let's, let's right. take especially the second term. Absolutely. He really did. Let's he, take he really a break. Did. No open phone. Let's make keep quiet. <laughs> All right, thanks for staying with us. And if you just tuned into Ladies' Night Out and we're discussing um, the topic, has the Nigerian uh, people prospered under President Muhammadu Buhari? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 a 4663 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa 1 with the hashtag Wayshow. So let it not look like we're trying to be attacking or whatever. I think... Oh, sorry. Our phone line is now open, right? The number to call is 70 7749 Remember to turn off the volume of your device, whatever it is that you're watching, so we don't get a feedback. The number is 70 Um, I wish Uti were here because, you know, I don't really know much about the finance sector, but from what Uti said, um, the president has done exceptionally well in the terms of all the policies that has yeah. to do with um, businesses and yeah. all of that. Yeah. That they are amazing True. policies True. that have True. been done. You know, it's, it's so mm. that's the thing, right? In the midst of all of these things, mm. you know, let me tell you why there's a problem. If you look at if you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, mm. right? Mm. Maslow's hierarchy of needs at the baseline, food is food, shelter, shelter yeah. and Secret. what's that other one again? Food, food shelter, shelter and something. Housing. You understand? And housing, yes. That, oh, that shelter, shelter is housing. housing. Right? Food, food, food shelter, and clothing, yes, clothing. Actually, yeah. at the baseline. So the problem that we have right now is because the majority of, our, of us are under that, yeah. what's it called, that level, mm. right? That is why we are having a problem. That's why we are where we are. Mm. That's why a lot of people are upset, a lot of people are angry. So even if they have done fantastic policies, yeah. right? If it's not... If it is not hitting, yeah, the, you the know, grassroots, people yeah. are not yeah, able to true. see it. Because yeah. on paper... This ease of doing business and some of the reforms yeah. that they did, especially in the economic sector, yeah. the finance sector, yeah. they've done fantastically yeah. well. Mm. On paper. Right? Yeah. Well, you see, well, the yeah, issue... I mean, in, even, in even, reality. Yeah, yeah. Let's take our caller for, I think, our first caller. Suleiman from Bauchi, you're live. Everybody. Are you there? Okay, your question is yeah. how, how we feel. Hello? Uh, your question is about how we feel about the government of Muhammadu Buhari. Has, yes, has Nigeria prospered under Buhari? Yes. Um, I'm, I'm a farmer and I'm from the Northeast. And uh, if you ask anybody from the Northeast, especially if you compared to 2015, no but no man will tell you that uh, things are not, going, not doing fine. Uh, then in the northwest, just uh, last few weeks, the Minister of uh, Water Resources 
commission uh, three uh, uh, farmland where the dredging, where dredging of water, where you can plant, uh, where you can farm in dry season. That place has been there for over 10 years. Nobody did it until the coming of Muhammad Bouak. If you come to Kano, you had three guys built before the coming of one, but today you are talking about 50. And if you want to ask the question, as the people that came, came from Lagos to Africa, uh, Lagos to Africa. Okay, thank you, Suleiman. You, when you call next time, always switch off the, because you are trying to hear yourself at the same time talk, so it causes a delay. I get you. Um, he said the, the farm and all of in that. Terms of agriculture, in, in terms sector, of agriculture yeah, and yeah. all of that, that yeah. they've been able to make There's some level some of progress. progress yeah. So yeah. you see, there really been level of progress, especially for us here in the in the um, southwest. No, so it, <laughs> okay, so you know, typically <laughs> um, in terms of agriculture, there's um. Well, I don't, I don't know, for some reason, mm. it is um, by default, let's, let's just say by default, we say northerners farm, yes. you know. So mm -hmm. um, in terms of um, interventions, in terms of um, policies that allow for, um, you know, ease of exports, ease of um, access to seedlings, mm -hmm. you know, and all that, I know that there's been a lot of intervention for them, even, from, uh, even at the level of seed capital. There's been a lot of them. Again, that's a lot of people in the in the north. In the north, but I, I don't know how far. But I also know that Lagos State was um, very. Lagos State did something in partnership with some you know other states mm -hmm. for state. yeah for rice. But well, now know. Lagos State has Lagos State has actually built their own rice yeah meal. rice mill. Yes, no. yes, they so, have. So they they don't really need yes um, KB State yes, anymore. Yes, yes, yeah. but there's still an ongoing partnership. Yeah. That they okay. have because I was just because that was say, under Governor Ambo, the way they did the lake rice, so mm. Lagos Kebi yeah, rice, yeah, lake yeah, rice, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, um, Governor Songwulu now, yeah. I hear, has built his a own massive, rice, massive, massive rice, 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 rice mill. Well, yeah. that would be actually very good because yeah. I was just yeah. going to say, I remember when the border was closed the other mm. time mm. and they did not allow any importation of rice, especially. Mm. I mean, it, people really suffered because the rice that we now had in Nigeria was filled, filled with stones, oh, it, yeah, wasn't yeah, yeah, yeah. it was very expensive, yeah, one. Yeah. it was not properly. Um, processed, mm. so it was just somehow. So, I mean, if you say that, I mean, I know that closing that border was in a bit to you know increase on um, production, local, local production, production yeah. in Nigeria yeah. and increase agriculture yeah. as well, but I don't think that it was particularly effective, effective. at that time. Let me take Abdullahi from Adamawa State. Your life, uh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, honestly, <coughs> um, tough. I'm um, in a different, but to be very frank, the president has done his best. Uh, I think the only thing that the president is lack of supervision. Whatever he did, assignment, he doesn't ask, how did you do it, this one, how did you do it, how did you do it. So most of them have taken the advantage of that. But in terms of infrastructure, in terms of agriculture, in terms of honestly, uh, Youth empowerment, you know, the, the cash transfer. The president has done so much, but the problem the president had was his maintenance. Honestly, I think all the ministers had the passion that the president had for this country. Honestly, people have moved well for us. And secondly, the issue of the governors, some of the governors have done well, and some of them are just waiting for the president to do everything for them. Mm. Thank you. What did he say? Okay, so um, he said that um, in terms of infrastructure, agriculture, that he thinks the president. Has oh yes, done infrastructure. Well. Yeah, yes. and well, that. Um, but you see, let me tell you something. I, I need us to understand this thing, and this is not me bashing any government, mm. right? To whom much is given, much is expected. expected. Nigeria is too blessed. It's almost like, a, like an insult, mm. right? For the things that we claim to be commissioning, for the things that we claim to be bragging about, is an insult. Mm. Because guess what? Nigeria is... See, Nigeria has no business. Being poor. No business. Absolutely. Right? In terms of, like, we, we should be playing. We are not even... We are nowhere. We've not even scratched yeah. at all. Because 
We have everything for goodness sake. Mm. Is it that it is in our having everything that is the biggest problem that we have? Mm. But then again, I think that we should also look at why we are trying to say, okay, um, what's it called now? Buari has not done so much. I think we should also look at it this way that Nigerians, Nigeria's problem mm. is deeply rooted. Mm. It's Eight years is not enough to fix Nigerian problem. And unfortunately for us, when any government does any anything, no matter how massive it is, That's in Nigeria, yeah. it just feels like a drop in, a the, drop ocean in the ocean. Because it's, there's a lot of problems already. Let me take a zik no, Sorry, they said the phone has been buzzing. Man, I <laughs> They told me to keep quiet. Please, Ezekiel, go ahead. Ezekiel, you're live. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Go ahead. I want to greet you all in the studio. Thank you. Now, that um, we are trying to talk about um, the president, what he has done, his um, rule. I'll be sincere with you. For me, and if I was calling, I was calling five over hundred, and I'll tell you why. Now we are seeing um, some people call that um, he has done this, he has done that. The truth is, what impact are the common people on the street feeling? Yeah, yeah. What impact are people outside? Eh, are they enjoying from his government? Eh? Who invited your help? Who who you help? He did Niger Beach. Eh? Is that uh, see see if you, if you who talk of impact? Is that most? I mean, a common man on the streets. What are they benefiting? Mm. That's why you say yes. Yeah, so he has tried. If you go outside now to the street and go ask people, how much is the bag of rice? How much is the bag of cement? How much? No, don't need it. For me, eh, I was I was going five of hundred. Mm. That you. five said I just managed even five. <laughs> it should be zero. <laughs> Talk of priority. Mm. Forget Thank it too. Thank you. Thank you, Ezekiel. Let's mm. take more callers. Go ahead. Okay. Um so when we're talking about prospering or prospering, we're looking at a whole it's wholesomeness. It's, it's wholesomeness. Mm. Right. I love when you started by saying Nigeria, before now, Nigeria was seen as a growing nation and suddenly just became stagnant. Poverty that means that's, these are people that have really looked at what he has done or what this administration has done to be able to draw those words. And I started by also mentioning this little salvage. So we're not, yes, agriculture, but it's just, just like one out of, we're talking mm. about security. I beg to differ when you talk about the banking sector. Like the caller just said, we are, we are supposed to feel the impact of some of these things. The banking sector, I'm also in that industry. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I know companies that are strong. They, they don't have access to funds. Mm -hmm. Some of the CBN policies don't favor businesses. Mm -hmm. Rates are going up. And yeah. these are things which, so how, how I, I, I don't know. How is that even possible? How is it? It's not helping businesses. Businesses have not been helped all this time. So I beg to differ what um, you Uti said. said. Uti, no, no, no. I beg to differ. <laughs> I think I really need to know where she's coming from because I also have, from the area I'm coming from, it's negative. I've not seen the positive impact of some of these policies. To a certain extent, I even feel like they're confused at some point mm. because today they come up with a policy, the next day they are contradicting. It's just all over the place. Mm. Yeah, when we talk about health, Nigeria, what's the improvement? The problem, problem is things. execution. Let Let thank you. Uh, implementation, Steven. more like implementation, actually. From Kogi State. Stephen, you're live. Go ahead. Hello. Good evening, ladies. Hi, good evening. Good evening, ladies. Good evening, Stephen. I'm talking about... Buhari's performance, why wouldn't he have uh, bothered or uh, probably would have uh, been uh, given a, somehow a fast match if only he had allowed the institutions under his supervision to do the right thing during last presidential and uh, state elections. If the right thing had been done, even the world would have praised him. So the whole thing we are talking, praising himself of, all have been eroded because of the action of Pilate, the police, and other institutions that denied Nigerians their right of choosing the right person. Thank you so much, David. And, and again, honestly speaking, if we understand 
um, what leadership is about. Mm. It's also a, it's also accepting mm. when you are failed. yes because President Muhammadu Buhari's time when he came in in 2015, mm -hmm. people still had faith in the elections. Sure. I came out. I was under that rain. We stood in the night. The way we stood to count votes, the this person, we stood. We were there. Our votes must count. We wanted, we wanted to get rid of corruption in the country. And that was why, and because there was a good president mm. then, Jonathan, so we wanted at the better. Helms of, no, at the helms of affairs. Mm. Because if, pres, if President Jonathan was not a good president, like in terms of like a, a good leader, let me put the word as a good leader, he would not even be president today because that one would have done exactly, you know, all some of the things that we saw play out here, almost like force and use of power and all of that. They allowed the people's will to go, you know, to just to happen, right? So I don't know how to play it out, right? You can't, you can't have it good here and have it bad here. As a leader, there has to be some level of balance, balance. Mm. right? Exactly. It shouldn't be that you are good here and you're not good here. That's where I have a challenge, right? Mm. It's not like, it's not like um, Nigeria is so bad, mm. right? Because I know some people come with that argument. Ah, what are you saying? He's done a lot of things. Nigeria is not that bad. But you see, for the capacity to which Nigeria can play, mm. we are not even near mm. that level at all. Okay, I like, I like what you said, Lad, mm. the capacity to which Nigeria can play. Yeah. But then we don't expect that it is just one person, like I've said again. Yeah. That would do the work in eight years. Let me tell you what. Now, the, I, I was, my question, my question is this: Can we actually categorically say that Buari hasn't done anything? Maybe not one hundred percent, because I don't know. But I feel like the truth is, you can't be all good, because even if you are doing the right thing, there are some set of people that will still insist Damn that me. no, you're not doing the right thing. Damn now, what has he when done the, when the head of the fish is rotting? What? Has he done fifty percent of the things that he promised? Mm. Let's read the things that he promised. <laughs> no, because this is, I mean, it is said that when a president Prince actually has Potter carried out. Uh, let us read it. I'm sure you have the <laughs> answer. Read it. Let us answer your question. Prince, from Port Harcourt, your life. Please go ahead. You have like a minute, please. Read the thing. I want to Hello. hear it. Yes, go yeah. ahead. Your life. Yes, uh, I'm calling from Port Harcourt. Go ahead, Prince. Yes, we know. Yeah, it will be sad for me. To score Buhari even one percent, <laughs> I will not. Somebody give him five percent. I will not give him even one percent. He has trailed Nigerians. Mm -hmm. The question is, before he came on board, what was the parallel market dollar to naira? But, 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 you can't but it was not his fault exactly. now. You they, can't we, judge, we had a, international market, a global was crisis, yeah, global there was COVID, there was, COVID was the there was whole loss. Now, that is, that is one. What is the price of rice today, a bag of rice today, that is very common to a poor man to feed on? You can't afford it. Insecurity everywhere. They stole the people's mandate. People cannot freely travel in rivers right now. There are some areas you cannot go because of insecurity. All of these promises were made by him. And today, I don't know how to rate Nigeria. Mm. And I don't know where we are going. As we kept our children for one year at home, mm. even nobody said us. anything. Mm -hmm. Our children went out on demonstration what happened to our children? Mm. Same country. Thank you. I, th I, I think it's good for us to remind ourselves. Mm. Okay, sorry. You know, you said something about we had a good president then. Again, you know, at the, make, coming to conclusions like that is based on time. Mm. So people are saying that. Time. By the, by another exactly. Years, we might exactly. Be President Buhari the reason why there was so much agitation for Buhari to become president then was because everybody felt that Jonathan was failed failing, the yes. country. And Actually. they felt they felt that he was very lax. Ex in his ex exactly. And so, allowed people to plunder our resources. Exactly. So they in the blink of an eye. As he has to for the next in president. the blink of an eye. And <laughs> when act, I saw eight years of change. An act that he did. To call the president, to call the president elect, which was Muhammadu Buhari, then, suddenly made him an elder, a, elder, elder statesman. Made him a hero. It mm. made him a hero. Mm. Let's take comments. You Let's know? take comments mm. quickly. 
interesting. Wow. Somebody wow. has said it that Uwa, wait another eight years. Exactly. You might just be celebrating President Buhari exactly. that he was the best because the exactly. last president is always the yes to, to measure, to the, measure next the next president. president. I don't, well, <laughs> um, <laughs> this person um, did not say he saw her name. Says the question should go to people who use the train, who use the second Niger Bridge all other infrastructure by this government. How do you know whether a government has done well is by, is by the problem that came its way, COVID, Ukraine, and Russia war, COVID and the drop in oil price. The rise of inflation is everywhere in the world. Boko Haram is over. This person said Boko Haram is Boko Haram over? COVID, that's palliative. Have you forgotten all those videos? When he came to our country. Let's take comments. I can't take comments. Okay, mine's a very brief comment. So change never comes easy. If you don't believe me, ask Chinese. That's actually my point. You know, I feel like everyone just feels like Barry should just come and perform magic. The truth is, is it really Buhari or is it the... Is it the entire government? Because yeah. Buhari is not is not the government. Yes. Buhari happens mm. to be the president. But is it is Ask it Buhari? Ask question. <laughs> if the head is rotting, what happens? Yeah, the perfect? entire yeah, body sorry, actually sorry. Sorry. Is, there, there, there are a lot of things that were put we on time. Buhari. Mm. Yes. I mean, quickly. But let's go back to the time of COVID, mm -hmm. when the federal government had to do a lot of bailout for a lot of states. Now it begs the question. The same way people elected the president, mm -hmm. were the same way people elected the governors. Okay. How many governors actually did anything for Good their Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of Wales. <laughs> if you do not read this <laughs> message, we have problems. <laughs> <Daniel Ilo>. uh, <laughs> the answer is a capital no. During the first four years, he promised us change. We never got that change. Mm. The next four years, he promised us next level. We are still where we are. <laughs> the previous level. He belongs to APC, which means all promises cancelled. Ah, that ah. near. Yeah. On education, yeah. security, and other things, he failed woefully. I will mm. score him zero over 100. Yeah. His eight years has been a total waste and nightmare. My dear beautiful sisters, Dami and Glory, you are welcome back. I missed you guys. Yeah. My name is Daniel Ilo, Ways Regular Fatina Legula. We know, we know, we know, we know. <laughs> we love you too, Daniel. <laughs> Thank you, Dami. Thank you. you. Ended, you like, like, Thank you. Well. <laughs> We, we see have so many long 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 because we can't exhaust Follow us across all our social media handles. Like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed, hey, this is our quote is very long. Our very long quote. The true mark of a leader is the willingness to stick with a bold course of action, an unconventional business strategy, a unique product development roadmap, a controversial marketing campaign. Even as the rest of the world wonders why you're not matching in step with the status quo. In other words, real leaders are happy to zig while others zag. They understand that in an era of hyper competition and non-stop disruption, the only way to stand out from the crowd is to stand for something special. Where is the something special for Nigeria? See you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m.